What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Hope everybody's having a great day or night whenever you're watching this. And I can't believe it, but well, actually, I know I can't believe it, but the Niners upset the Packers in Green Bay in the frozen tundra of like negative 5,000 degrees. That was incredible. Uh, before I continue on, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please like the video. The Niners, if you're going to start with any part of the team that deserves any credit for this win you have to start with the defense yes some people might say special teams but the defense thoroughly kept them in this game literally all night they had like five sacks uh nick bosa and eric armstead had two each those guys are just absolutely amazing like they have a true true you know yin and yang or whatever you want to call them on the d-line those guys are powerful fast they have everything. They're great D linemen and the Niners and their fans should be very thankful to have those guys on the team because they made life for Aaron Rodgers an absolute nightmare. And anytime it's this pretty, pretty, a pretty simple process here. If you're able to get pressure on a quarterback very often, you're probably going to throw him off of his game. And I don't know if they necessarily threw Rodgers off of his game, but they definitely held him in check. He only had like 230 yards, no touchdowns, really only was throwing to like two, maybe three people the entire time. They did a great job, a great job. Devonte Adams got his, but he's, he's always going to do that. He's the best receiver in the league. It is what it is. You get, you got to live with him getting something, but Armstead and Bosa making life an absolute nightmare for uh, Rogers in the backfield. They were stout against the run. They didn't give up the big, they gave up one big play before the, before the half, but they managed to come out of that unscathed because of the special teams. They were really, really, really good. And I personally, I said I thought the Packers would win this game just because of the circumstances, the conditions, and everything like that. I felt like they were just more likely to win this. I was wrong, which is completely fine. And I'm happy to be proven wrong because I love upsets. I was low-key rooting for the Niners throughout the game because I, I love seeing an upset. And, I, and if you guys watched my other previous Niners video, I'm very high on this team, and I like what they – I think they're a legit threat. And they've proven that in the last like two months of the season, once they got healthy, finally. Uh, so now we got to give the other basically biggest reason they won this game, the special teams, they deserve a ton of credit blocking a field goal before the half. That's three points taken off the board for the Packers. So you're keeping them, you're keeping the game close, which if you can do that and you give your team a chance towards the end, that's all you can ask for, especially on the road in a game like this where it's basically like you can't even run full speed because you can't, you don't have any grip on the, on the turf or grass, whatever you want to call it. It's icy. It's you know, every time you hit the turf, it hurts. All those conditions, the special teams blocking that field goal before the half and then blocking that punt and getting the touchdown off of it. Absolutely incredible. Hats off to them. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say the guy's name that got the touchdown, but kudos to him. Uh, I think it was Willis got the block. It's, they, they pretty much played really, really well in two-thirds of the main ways of winning a game, being defense and special teams. Offensively was a struggle, but given the conditions and everything and the fact that the Packers' defense is very good, it was kind of to be expected. I didn't think that it would be like Dallas because I don't think Dallas's defense is good as Green Bay's and, you know, like I said, conditions and all that. George Kittle, he had one drop earlier in the game. I bet is over on his catches. Uh, he fell one short. I'll take the loss on that. But he had big play after big play on and big play. Like those third down, the conversions, he had the one, like he one-handed it with like originally with the right hand, and then he dropped it in with the left hand and got his feet down. He had the one where he took off down the field on that uh, on the last drive of the game. He's a monster. George Kittle, top two or three tight end, doesn't matter who you're talking to. You have to have him in there. He's a beast. Uh, Elijah Mitchell was, he was running hard. There just wasn't a lot of space for him. I thought he was good enough though. Debo Samuel basically has the biggest play of the game or the most clutch play of the game. Cause I don't know how likely the odds of making that field goal are if they're kicking it from eight or nine yards further out, but that first down run on third down with basically less than a minute to go, you're making sure that Rogers is not going to touch this ball again. You're not going to lose like you did in like week two or whatever it was. Debo Samuel, that clutch run, big deal. And I thought he had a pretty, pretty good game. In general, he just wasn't – he didn't get the touchdowns or, like, the big splash plays that we saw in the previous game against Dallas. But 
he made he made the crucial plays that you need in order to win these games and win these tough games on the road against a really really good really really good team Jimmy G, uh, I don't think he's a long-term answer. I don't. I think you draft Trey Lance for a reason. But he was pretty horrible tonight by all accounts. I thought he was pretty, pretty bad. Uh, But I got to be fair to him. I did not expect him to have a good game given the fact he's going up against a top-10 defense. He's on the road. It's snowing. They play in – santa clara it's like 80 degrees there all the time this is just not it's not his circumstances and i thought that they were going to have any success it was going to be because they had to make big plays somewhere else and to their credit they did and they made more big plays than their opponent and basically they might have just ended aaron Rodgers' green bay career he might be done he might be going somewhere else in this offseason Devonte adams who knows if he comes back he might just be ready to go to Las Vegas, Miami, or LA, or somewhere like that. I think it really just put a lot, a lot of pressure on Green Bay in this offseason. And as of someone that loves that stuff, because it's great content personally, and it's fun for to for entertainment and you know, as a fan of the game, seeing those kinds of things unwind throughout an offseason are very, 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 very fun for me. But I, I do think that Jimmy G's got at most two more games as a Niner. I don't think he'll be on the team next year. Like I said, I think you draft Trey Lance as high as you did for a very specific reason. You don't draft him to sit him. Uh, Might have ushered on the Jordan Love era in Green Bay, but so enough about the Packers. I don't really want to talk about them. They underwhelmed and they got outplayed pretty much all over the game. And so now we're going to get the Niners versus either the Rams, who I've, I've picked the Rams to beat the Bucks, which could be wrong. We don't know. We'll find out tomorrow or the Bucks, and they honestly match up pretty, pretty well against both teams, but they, anytime that you have a really, really darn good front seven on defense, you match up with most teams pretty, pretty well, because you're going to basically means you're going to be able to keep them in check and not let the game get out of hand, because you're going to have a pass rush that is in a run stuffing D line and linebackers. You're going to have something that is stopping the other team, which is going to keep you in the game all night. And that's, you know, that's all they had to do. Keep the game in, keep it close. And when we need to make one clutch drive, we're going to make that clutch drive and we're going to pull it off. But I, I think they're, I don't remember what their record is against the Rams the last few years, but I know they've been dominant over them. So I don't, maybe I'll make a video on that later in the week or something. Once, you know, we get injury reports and everything. Same, Cause I know Debo was limping off the field. Kittle was walking with a limp. Pretty much the entire team was just beat up. And I, you expect that in a game with the conditions that were in this. So if they get the bucks, you'd have them against Brady which, I mean, Brady is Brady. We know how great he has been his entire career. I think whoever they play, it's going to be a really fun game. I don't. I think it's going to be really close no matter what. I don't think any, any team is going to blow out the other team. I'd be very surprised if that happened. So I'm, I'm excited for this. The Niners, man, y'all, y'all just impress me every single time. I don't get it. Uh, for not having, like, the, the big, big-name guys and everything like that, uh, they are a very – very darn good team and i would not be surprised if they made the super bowl or even won the dang thing uh i don't have much to say more further than that i'm really excited for tomorrow's games we're gonna see how this goes um yeah so if you got to this point in the video please like it if you're new to the channel please subscribe i really appreciate it all peace